What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of The Locker Room. I'm here with the one and only James Seguiaro. Is that how you say it properly? Seguiaro? Or, yes. Or yes. is that an Aussie slang? Nah, nah. That's how you say it. It's Seguiaro, but... No, a lot of people call me Chico. So. Chico, yeah, I, I, um, yeah. I seen that on your face. Yeah, I was, I was actually like, I was like, I'm sure his name's James, but when I googled it, I was like, yeah, James Chico. How you been, man? You just got back into preseason. How you feeling? You're mentally ready to go. You had a, a spluttering season last year with all the injuries. How you feeling mentally? Yeah, uh, mentally refreshed. Um, really good to have that break. Uh, I think it was seven a bit weeks or something. Yep. So I break refreshed. Uh, let the body heal, ready to go. Um, Went over to America and just, you know, sort of just got away from everything. It was really good. Enjoyed my time over there. But then, um, yeah, just now really eager to get back, you know. Uh, first week um, started on Monday, so. How are you feeling? Yeah, well, sure. well, the old Gary Jack's a bit tight. But <laughs> it's not too bad, but um, you expect that in um, off-season, I mean, yep. sorry, pre-season. So, no, really excited. Um, so over and overseas and got a new coach, so um, things a bit different. Yeah, so explain how you feel, like, obviously – you, you and Ivan would have had a good relationship because you got the best footy out of you. Yeah, I yeah. was um, speaking to uh, Mansour the other week, and he was saying that, you know it was tough, but he was looking forward to Hook taking over something different, whatever's best for the club. What what are the differences, and how you feel about it? You you know you're you're looking forward to it. Do you feel like it's a chance for you to keep improving your footy, or? Um, yeah, well, it's different in the way of um, like so, so I come to a new club. Yeah, like that's that's the best way I could explain it. Like yeah. Like learning new um, new players, but not the same players, but different calls. Yep. Okay. So it's pretty much um, it's only been like a couple of days, so yeah, yeah. Only about three about three days yep. on the field. So it's been but already a lot of different squads. Are a lot younger, man. Like oh really? I'm, yeah, real young. I think I'm like the fourth or fifth fifth oldest, and you know what? You're 24, bro. What? Yeah, That's something like that. But like it's yeah, it's come to that point where you know like. You're not a little kid, like, you're not, you're not yeah. the, you know... The little rookie anymore. Not the rookie anymore, yeah. you, you can't, you know, sort of have to put the, you know, the big yep. boy pants on, so yep. to speak, but yep. no, nah, it's different, and um, no, Hook's only had a little bit of experience with him, but like, he seems seems like a, um, like, like an, well, to best explain it, like, I used to be like the Cowboys, yep. which was really... Um, you know, sort of like a dominant person. Yeah, very. Way, but he, he, you know, he, like he, he's pretty much what you see is what you get, yep. and he's not going to beat around the bush. Going to yep. tell you straight up, yep. which is, which is awesome, and it's what, which which is what I reckon you need out of a coach. Yep. You know, especially when it comes to um, you know periods in in the season or you know thereabouts when you're sort of like oh, hum and hiring if you played good enough yep. or this yep. and that, and like you if mean. you're on the fringe, if you if you you know. If, if you're going to make the team, if you're not going to make the team, yep. you know, he'll tell you how is it, how, do, yep. how it is. And like, you know, um, I believe like, you know, what you need to prove on, improve yep. on. And you know, that's, that's, that's what I've, well, my experience so far yep. with Hook that, that I can take out of him and um, I can, I can see. Yeah, no, nah, he's a, um, he's pretty good like that. Pretty straight shooter, pretty old school, which is good too, because of the toughness he kind of brings. I, I yeah. don't know if, if you've noticed it yet, but he's very, a very defense, defense yep. orientated coach. Yep. He yep, likes definitely. to be tough. Likes a very aggressive side, which is which might be good for the Penny Panthers because you've got like you've got really good talent attacking wise. Attacking yeah, wise is yeah, not your issue. Yeah, yeah, if you can definitely. get that defense properly, like like good, it might be the perfect mixture for you. You know what I mean? Well, exactly. Sort of what sort of how Mary done to the Dragons really? Yeah. How he bring that sort of the old tough you know, edge, a tough edge, old yeah. school, and you know they went to I think the first five rounds of this year, like you know yeah. being. On top and being, you know, that defensively really strong. You know, they weren't great attackingly, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's all cliche, but yeah, defense yeah. does win games, and yep. that's what we missed um, this year. Definitely, in, in it's more of a you know mental and attitude thing that we missed also. So he's definitely um, bringing that, and um, yeah, looking forward to um, the obviously the next seven weeks coming up. And your your relationship with Ivan, he he took you from. You know, you weren't fringe. You weren't fringe Queensland Cowboys. You were doing really well actually towards when you did get signed. But you weren't as now. You're prime ministers. Now yeah. You're on the verge of possibly Origin. He, what's your relationship with him been like? You know, what, what has he brought out of you that you feel that he uniquely could have done, or has done? Oh, ha- who Ivan? Yeah, Ivan. Um, yeah. mate, I think he just sort of, um, just sort of let me let me sort of do my own thing in a way that, you know, he didn't really hold me back from anything. Yep. And um, I'm not saying bad to any other coaches uh, previously or anything, but, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm not 
it's like that. But like Ivan sort of everyone has a unique way. Yeah, of yeah. Coaching. I, Ivan had like a way of just you know, let me do what I want to do, but not like holding reins on me, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, you yeah. know. But and then just sort of let me play my footy. But then he'd sort of guide me in a way that you know he'd funnel your talent. To yeah, where exactly. It to be. Where and yeah, rather like, than kind of just direct it, he would just kind of let it flow. Where yeah, it instead of, of just always like say it's like just just a scenario saying, you know, when, some, when you're doing a drill and someone says don't drop the ball, you think about dropping the ball. Yeah, and then I know you, drop, you, you know what I mean. Yep. If someone just lets you know, just you know just keep flowing, and then eventually you know it come you know the last a couple of minutes of a session or whatever you, you don't drop the ball you know yeah. I mean, th- that's the way sort of it's like at a it. half cup full rather than empty kind of yeah he was yeah he was, yeah he was and he was always just you know um never an angry person so it's like yep. that's yep. when some top, like go to your shell like yeah, well, especially yeah. when a young bloke coming through or you when might be afraid boy, to make an error yeah, afraid, afraid to yeah afraid yep. to play footy so to speak yep. and but Definitely, def- and, and a guy like you that you do kind of play off the cuff and very explosives that that would be fit you perfectly so yeah exactly and you know um, it just showed the other, like, you know, the other year, it just, um, when, it, when, you know, like, like probably the best, your best year of my career. And, yep, 2014. You know, yeah, 2014. Yep. And, you know, you know, we had a whole Pan- Panthers had a good year. And, and did, have you spoken to him since? Or? Yeah, yeah, I've yep. spoken to him since. Um, and was he kind of just good luck with everything and, and pretty positive as in, to, like, you personally towards your career? Or, um, yeah, yeah. Or? I, I, I just pretty much rang him to you, just thank him about everything, you know. Yeah. Is it's been my best coach yep. that I've ever had, and um, you know, like um, coaches like Ivan, you've always wanted to, you know, um, keep a strong relationship with, and always, you know, you know, want to play for. Yep. So, you know, just rang him, and said thanks for everything, and yep. I think he'll get picked up again. Yeah, no, it's not really. Yeah. Oh uh, man, he's a uh, because he's still young. He's still yeah. only like what forty five or something like that. Yeah. So he's a young coach. Whereas most coaches are a little bit older than that, which is which is something that I found, even though I didn't play very well at the Warriors when I was under him, I found it was very, um, he was easy to, not easy to talk to, but he was young, so he could relate a little bit on something. Yeah, exactly. exactly what, like, yeah, exactly. That's just one of his points. Like, I used to, my honest, I used to go in his room and yep. his, cool. yeah, his office or whatever, and then I used to, like, whenever he used, used to talk, and Matt, I just let everything out, and he yep. just, he's had that presence about him that I could just talk to him as a mate, and, yep. you know, it helped me in you know whatever was happening outside footy and with footy and yep. you know that's what the uh, bond like yep. that we like I grew with him for the for the three years that I was um, with him for and you know it was a it was a massive shock to myself when I when I found out but um, you know that's footy yeah and um, you know this is pro- this is probably what we you know so sort of need not say anything bad to Ivan but like probably yeah maybe is, yeah you know, uh, it might be like, it might know, be you know might not mean? be yeah, yeah. you got to look at it like, like I said like a, yeah. Half glass full sort of yeah. type of scenario. Um, and you're from PNG. Yeah, correct. So, short like, what was your upbringing like? I mean, it would have been pretty tough. Like, it's a, it, it's classed as a third world country, isn't it? Mm. Or close to? Yeah, on, it's on pretty the, much. Yeah, yeah close yeah. to, but it's it's, come, it's going there. It's coming there. Um, it's getting better. It's getting better, but yep. well, yeah. Well, uh, my dad was like a businessman. Yep. Like, um, he used to start off trading like empty bottles. Yep. Which and is then like crazy. Like, I mean started trading empty bottles if you said that to some kid growing up now oh you got to trade empty bottles to get by they'd be like oh, I'm better than that yeah yeah you know what I mean like, yeah yeah, yeah. well that's where he started and then you know he pretty much grew up an empire from empty bottles yeah from oh. empty bottles like, wait wait a second yeah. walk me through this oh brother. just like his crates of empty bottles as far as I can remember or take empty bottles you just sell them to like you know oh, I'm not too sure like to companies, not companies, but like just people that buy empty bottles to like, you know, Feel water recycle, up yeah, stuff. recycle, but like empty, like sort of empty, sort of like uh, Cokes and empty, yep, like okay. sort of um, so you, like beer, beer, okay. beer bottles and stuff. And then he grew that empire up to like to used to distribute alcohol. Oh, really? Yeah, so he used to be like a BWS and stuff like that. So he started with nothing. Yeah, well, he was, he was pretty smart, like, yep. he, yeah, he's a pretty smart man and yep. whatnot. And he started from that and then he just, yeah, built up to like this. Uh, his business called Negisor Distributor, so he used to distribute alcohol, and like we used to have properties all over Papua New Guinea, and so was very successful. How many years did that take for him to to achieve that? Uh, I'm not that's, too sure, eh? Like that's amazing. Yeah, man. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, and he was it was because he used to play um, he rugby play, league. Yeah, played for the the Kumuls, didn't he? Or? Yeah, Kumuls. Yeah. He was a five eight center. Okay, and for the Kumuls, and he was like really like it's pretty yeah, good. He's always well. What I remember every time when um <clears throat> I used to drive around the car with him or yep. you know go up to people, yeah, you know, used to like everyone used to stop and so respect him. Well he was a very respected man. Yep. And um yeah, so he built that up to umpire, empire, sorry, and um went to 
buy build lodges and whatnot yeah. and then it was like pretty much like a multi oh really yeah yeah and wow. then um i uh, moved us over to Papua. New- i mean sorry to australia. Cairns, Cairns, australia yeah. and I, when i was about six seven and then yeah. um at that time uh, stuff was going on with um you know um the bank and um sb which is south pacific lager yeah which is um the company that I used to you know, like deal with, deal with yeah, and yeah. whatnot, and yeah. they were stealing money off him. Oh, really? And, you know, and then by all that, he's, and then he slowly, they started like, just... they, like, like they were taped the books, they were writing the books wrong, whatever okay. he said, like an alcohol from the, because SB was the beers yep. he sold. Yeah. Either writing the books wrong or whatnot, and then ended up, you know, ended up, we ended up being bankrupt men. Far out. So, yeah. so they, they they committed fraud and all that kind of stuff and were yeah, slowly, yeah. slowly draining money from him. Draining money bits, and then small like, bits, small um, bits. Um, Far out. Yeah, bro. Like, un- until I was about, like, didn't really realise until, like, when I was about, I think, 13, 12, yep. 13. Yep. So uh, over yeah, a 12, long period, yeah, long period long, of time. Yeah, when I, was, I was still living in Australia for a while. And, like, when the currency wasn't that bad, yep. but now it's, like, really bad. But, yeah, like, yeah. it started getting worse and worse yep. um, compared to the Australian dollar. And, you know... It, to a point where he had to like when you send money it was pretty much half so okay yeah so, so then, he was still living over there and he yeah he was he was living over there and there was me uh my my three sisters and yep. my two other brothers okay so like we're living at um in Cairns, yep. Kawara Beach, the house we built a house there. Okay, yep. And um, yeah, he would send money. So my mum didn't work because she couldn't because it was you know just sort five of, kids or whatever. Yeah, yeah well, like five, well five kids, six including six me, kids, but like um, yeah, yep. just because not allowed with the, I don't know, the rules or something, the visa oh, rules. Oh, the visa, yeah, yeah. yeah. So she, pretty much um, from all like primary school oh, really? dad was um sending money over and then and over there it's uh pretty corrupt so there's not yeah. really many avenues where he could find a way to stop them from doing it exactly yeah, exactly okay. yeah it's very corrupt it's yeah it's it, that's it's another world yeah, yeah, like, yeah if you if anyone's yeah. a chance to go over and just yeah. experience it that know what i'm talking about but um and then ended up um uh, bankrupt um ended up couldn't pay for school so i like, pretty much almost went to for a year without school really yeah man Wow, man, this is insane. And look at you now. You're playing first grade in a row. Do you yeah. ever just look back on those days and be like, I mean, look how far you've come. Yeah, I was like... Absolutely nothing. Um, no, them, them days, man, all I was thinking about was playing 40, eh? That and was your, think, your outlet kind of thing from yeah, getting away from... Yeah, that was my outlet. Like, yep. I always, always had training, so yep. that was my that was my escape from everything yep. that was happening around me. And then I used to wake up in the morning, look, see the kids go to school. I used to just like admire them so much. Really? Yeah, because I was going to school and I was sitting at home in and it was crazy. And then my parent, my... You, think about how crazy that is. You used to admire kids going to school, whereas like when I was growing up, yeah. I, mean, I, I, had a, I had a good, really good upbringing, really, you know, no, yeah, yeah. No, nothing like that. And I hated school. I wanted to leave school. <laughs> and you're sitting there wishing you were at school. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's, out, it's, it's, it's totally different life. So I think it's human nature with someone else you always want. Yeah. But, um, but I mean, it's, yeah. it's also some of those you, you would probably want it to learn. We, we, we say we don't want to go to school, but then when we don't go to school, we're not among our friends. We're not learning. Yeah, things, exactly. Kind of yeah, like, it's pretty much just yeah, to be connected with the rest of the world, yep. so to speak. And um, anyway, mum got remarried. Uh, my All my brothers and sisters moved on Arnie in uh, Gove, which is in um, the territory. Yep. They're in territory. Northern territory, yep. Um, Arnhem Land or whatever and um, yeah I was just by myself and there was my mum and her new husband and my mum had a new like a baby to um, yep. step brother my step brother so yep. um, mate yeah that was that was that was a pretty hectic part of my life where because it just felt like my mum my, my, everyone all my siblings just left me and yep. my mum was just with this new guy and had a kid and they were having their own family oh okay so, so you I was felt sort, very yeah. isolated and my only skate was 40 plus so I had like my best mate uh, Trent Barnard that um, n- the parents now call mum and dad as well oh okay because I used to go to the house every weekend and yep. I used to just like they take care of you yeah as soon as like pretty much 3.34 boom jump in the bus or they'll come pick me up and stay in the house whole weekend yep. till like uh, dinner on Sunday. Like yep. I just dread going home. Far out. That happened for like a good while, and then um, I had like a big argument with my mum once, yep. and my step, my step, um, st- stepdad or whatever, and um, he was staying at our house at the moment. My yep. dad built, and you know, like just had a big cars. argument, and then yep. he's 
said something, I said something, I said, you know, stuff like, oh, you yeah, see yeah. my dad's house out there, you say that to me. Yeah. And then had a big argument and then the way that weekend, I pretty much um, told um, Trent's family or mum and dad and yep. dad's like, they just come, just come stay with us. Oh, really? Yeah, and then it was oh, just yeah. hit. From there, like, everything started getting better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... <laughs> That's blow me away, bro. That's crazy. So you've gone from essentially feeling like you've got no family to, to a family that has... I feel like when you really put it into perspective, you know, you've got your family that is your family by blood. You have no choice in it. But a, a family that has a choice in being your family yeah. may be even stronger yeah. than a family that... You, like, you know, you know what I mean? Because they're yeah, exactly. choosing to take you in rather it's, than... Oh, having, man, it was just like... Something crazy, like it's just sort of like a movie out of a yeah. movie. Oh, bro, right? it, the sounds like a, it sounds like a movie, bro. 100% but, um, sounds like a movie. And now, mate, I mean, yeah, you're playing yeah. first grade, you play, you put the Australian jersey on. Yeah. You know, you're in the top. Like, when it comes to successful people, only a small, small percentage of Australians that are privileged to grow up in a, you know, a perfect neighborhood, a perfect upbringing, that they don't even make it, you know, to yeah, play to yeah. Australia. So, I mean, to come from <laughs> literally nothing to where you are now, it's crazy, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Do you, um, do you, um, and so, did you just kind of move on, like clean, clean slate from there, and just started focusing on footy and, and everything like that, or? Yeah, well, it was on, like I moved in obviously with my um, my mates, our parents, Trent's yep. parents, but then like just I think I just got to owe a lot of thing, things to them because um, I didn't like um, have that father son relationship yep. in the mother son relationship that <clears throat> you know normal kids have or yep. everyone. So like, just for someone to just. To, like care for me or just you know someone just said you know or pretty much you know when you're growing up your mum knows like everything if you're sick or you yeah, yeah. if, if you know you're talking to your old man if your old man says something your old man tells you something and you and then google says it's wrong your old man's right yeah google's yeah, wrong you know what i mean, mean. Google, yep. you know what I mean? Yep. you always be the old man yep. that's what like you know i used to wait we used to wake up in the morning do everything like wake up in the morning on Saturdays, we used to go to work with the old man yep. just to be around him and just, you know, it was just that, you know, bond that I miss and I would just yep. like admire um, Trent's parents or yep. my mum and dad because yep. honestly, they just worked hard for everything they got yep. they, or they have and just something I've always, you know, just pretty much like some rock cement in my, in, in yep. my sort of upbringing from there. So. Yeah. And so do you still, you know, see them pretty often and try yeah, to, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are they down in Sydney now? No, nah, they, they live up back in Cairns, back yep. at home in Cairns. So every time I go back, I, it's the yep, same mum and dad. So, uh, and, and when you made your debut for the Cowboys, what was that like? You, sorry, you were, the, were you at the Rabbitohs first? Was it the Rabbitohs? Or the oh yeah, Rabbitohs, but I, yeah, made my first grade debut. With the Cowboys. Cowboys yeah. What was, what was that like, that experience of going to your, um, your, your mate's mum and dad, your mum and dad, speaking to them and saying, look, I'm making my debut. Was that something that was an extremely special moment between you? Or? Yeah, well, um, it was a um, pretty solid session we had on, like, it was like a Monday and then it was round three, going on to round three. Yep. Round two against the Titans, Cowboys got pumped. Yep. And, um, yeah, questions have been said. Yep. Later on, and then... What, um, what was this uh, 2010? 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, yeah. So we had um, storms at home and then um, I was half asleep like after a field session. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then um, Neil Henry called me, look, mate, la da 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 Yep. The yeah. first one said, oh, I might be playing. And then he goes, end of, end of the conversation, he said, yeah, I think you're going to play. Oh, really? So you're going to play. So yep. and I was like, cheering. And then, yep. boom, first person I called was my dad, yep. uh, Dean, Dean yep. Barnard. And then I called him. I said, dad, guess what's happening? <laughs> and then, yeah, like, just over the moon, like yeah. the feeling, like you know yeah. the feeling, oh, like bro, it's crazy. It's something like it's so like honestly like a dream. The whole week is just a like pleasure, and even the game and <laughs> oh, it just and it goes like that. Man. Oh, like literally, it's gone. That's yeah, exactly. Over. Oh man. But then it's just like a it's like a feeling. You're like, man, I want to keep doing that. Yeah. You know? Oh, it would, I remember when I made my debut, I was like. I don't care, one in a roll game and I'll be happy. Yeah. As soon as I made it, bro, I was like, no way, I've got to stay here. I've got yeah, to stay in exactly. first grade. Did you, um, I feel like, I know it sounds crazy and I spoke to one of the other boys, uh, a few of the other boys about it. When I made my debut, nothing hurt me. I never got tired. Like, yeah. I just felt like, oh. I, just, I felt like, it's like not a superhero, but I felt invulnerable, eh? Like, just yeah, exactly. Couldn't be hurt. Nothing, like, I remember my first tackle, I was really scared that it was just going to be hectic. Like, Yeah, and, but it was like, oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's not even that yeah. bad. It's like it's like reserve grade, but just a bit bit uh, a bit faster. Oh yeah, it's ridiculously fast. But like yeah, yeah just I was just everywhere. Just like you know, you just yeah. you couldn't you couldn't get fatigued and yeah, like I was just 
one of my first run was I remember I dummied and then I went on the outside of Cooper Crong and I was like, he sort of touched me. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, you got me. Like, I was just sort of, because like he's scared. Like. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was scared too. And I remember, I remember it's distinctly playing the ball and going like, that was nothing. I didn't hurt at all. Yeah. What's going on here? Like I, I was really worried that it was just going to be completely, because like I remember watching in reserve grade, watching the first grades, I'm like, oh, they all look so much bigger. And because, like, back in our day, when we were playing reserve grade, our jerseys were real loose. Yeah, and yeah, shit. yeah. And, and when you look at first grade, they all have tight jerseys on. They were big and muscular. I was like, man, these guys are way too yeah, big. Yeah, they're just, oh. and then they just like watch on silent and the speed just going, oh my God. Yeah, it's so quick, that? Yeah. Look at the reload, like, what? <laughs> um, and yeah, so that, so you, you let them know. And did they come to your game, your first game? Yep. I uh, yeah. came to my first game. So did my um, mom and my brothers. Uh, my real brothers and then my uh, my best mates and stuff like that and all yep. my mates that I grew up with came and so did my parents. So yeah, it was um yeah, well probably one of the best there. Yeah. Whole lot of whole lot of my yep. career, you know. It's having a just all, it's not everyone that sort of you grew up with and yep. you know, having them there and just, just winning as well and then doing the lap. Yep. Yeah, just seeing them, just seeing the, like the people that you grew up with and, and being like I, I can't believe that I'm standing on this field like this field. Yeah. Looking out at other people yeah. that are coming here to watch me play, oh, yeah. it's crazy. And it's so, like a, such a good like feeling and like just accomplishment of like you. Yeah. They're proud of you. You know what I mean? Just yeah. like just the best things, like the best thing, but the best thing I believe like to do in your life or one of the things to do in your life is make your parents proud. Yeah. And especially like when you make your old man proud, man, like as you know, someone you look up to your, yep. your whole life growing yep. up and then for yep. him to say like you're proud and just you can just tell by the look in his eye was yeah. you know something that like I'd never no one would take over oh me. yeah 100% there's n- nothing there's absolutely nothing like that feeling of, of you feel like you've done your family proud because they've yeah. sacrificed yeah. so yeah, exactly. much for you and exactly you don't exactly. realise it when you're younger how much your parents sacrifice for you yeah like, I mean I look back on it now I'm like like the whole lot, every, yeah. every footy session, every running session, every soccer session. I shouldn't say footy because I didn't play footy. Yeah. But every soccer session, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's crazy what they do. Everything, for and then you just like, and then you sort of realise it now, and then you're like, oh, <laughs> so I was almost so an advocate. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm gonna have a, I'm nearly. Yeah. I'm 28, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean? So like, gonna, and then yeah. he's like, oh, you're worried know. about all everything else. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't know if I have I have it in me. I'm too selfish, bro. <laughs> I'm too selfish to like. But everyone reckons as soon as you have it, you, like it changes. Something. Yeah, yeah. But right now, I'm like, man, there is no way. There's like, so many things you want to still do, eh? Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred. Far out. Um, so. You made you. What was the the decision to go to the Penrith Panthers? What was that like? Was it because I think it didn't you, the the Cowboys had a pretty good hooker at the time? Was it? Oh was no, Penny Penny retired. Like I wasn't. I was pretty much the next one. Next the next in line. one. Yep. Up, but like, um, oh, no, I just didn't feel comfortable with, yep. um, um, like, the, I wouldn't say the coach. It was sort of like the staff. Not the, the the staff was right, but just like sort of like I didn't feel like I was wanted. Yep. You know, so to speak, and like, the, everyone was getting re-signed. You know, they would, you know, they've, they've been having a healthy squad for yeah for the last five yeah. five six years, so to speak. But um, I just didn't feel like I, I was wanted then. Like, you know, I'm just sitting around, people getting signed. There's like other blokes getting signed for me, and, and I was like, you know, I've always wanted to come back to Sydney since I've been I uh, was let go from South. Yeah. So I've always wanted to come back, and then, you know, I told the manager, you know, I'll. Yep. Get me down then. Yep. Um, you know, I had a meeting with Ivan after we played him. Um, and, yeah, that was went pretty good. And then the game breaker was when Gus called me. Yep. And, you know, have, Gus has a way with words. But, yeah, it was pretty much, you know, <clears throat> pretty much what, what I needed to hear. I want you, and, you know, I want you to make you, make you into this type of player. And then it was, from there I just decided, yep. That's where I'm going, you know. Um, that's what I want to be if I want to, you know, actually have a go at this like, footy and, like, make mm. it into, like, a, you know, 10-year ten, ten career. Yep. And, and Gus Gore, he, he's he's changed Penrith for the better. Was he – you said that he had a way with words. And was he a huge influence or was it was it just the fact that both Ivan and Gus said, we want you here, we want you as our hooker kind of thing? Yeah, well, I think pretty much um, – uh, both, but um, majority majority Gus, but yeah, the um, I actually don't remember much of the odds. I've been seeing because I went night, went out the night before. 
So I don't remember <laughs> much. Just, like, yeah, because I was just there, just sitting in a brekkie. But um, yeah, but it's pretty much yeah. yeah. Gus said, you know, this is what I've seen five years, and this is how you're going to get there if you come with us. You know, you're going to reach that goal. So. Yeah. And, and did you, did your uh, was it hard leaving your family up there? Was it you know so close, or did they kind of understand you? Understood um, you needed to do it, and you'd already kind of left before actually, hadn't you, for the rabbit oats? Yeah, yeah, it, that was hard. Yeah. That was very hard. Yeah, um, still still young, it's still really immature. Yeah. Not that I'm not that much younger now, but <laughs> like I was still you know pretty much still fresh boy from the bush still. Yeah. Um, but I think um, now what made it better was um, I might have misses at the time. And like you know, um, she helped me a lot um, that year, that first year. Yeah. Come down, and like always, have someone there. Otherwise, would have been pretty lonely and whatnot. But um, yeah, I would have to give a lot of credit to her, to tell you yep. the truth, because you know she was from, she's from Cairns as well, oh, okay. and it just just gave me that sort of sort of that you know the extra person or that shoulder or yep. whatever someone that I needed to be then you know in love so to speak and and all that. So like you know, I had some my escape from footy as well yeah yep. so and someone you kind of knew before you yeah, came down yeah to be able like to... i sort of knew every, like a lot of my mates still hang around here in sydney and whatnot but yep. like you know just just sort of like that family but that yep i know, you know exactly what you know, mean, that right. bond you, that you need down here and that's just so, that's what i like realized when i first moved down so different compared to queensland oh man <clears> so, much so different ahead. like a lot of people which is not bad but like you get used to it but it's just you know queensland when you're it's all about your mates. Yeah, yeah. Queensland, which is not, I'm saying something about here, but like, you know, everyone's so tight and like, everyone's so like together. Like, it's when, yeah. after training, boys go on coffee, you have to go coffee. Yeah. Or boys are going to get a feed that night, you're going yeah. to have to feed that night. Now, like, when I first realized I moved down, training finished, bomb goes off, everyone's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause yeah, I know what you mean, bro. I know what you mean. It's 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 weird. Some clubs are different like that. Like um, Dragons are pretty good like that. They they all go to coffee together. Yeah. I think, I think it's a smaller a smaller town thing as in the smaller town you're kind of in, the more yeah, tight yeah, everyone that's, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose. Because like, there's not much yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like, for example, Canberra, they're always noted to be really tight because there's nothing to do in Canberra. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think, uh, yeah. Like Brizzy, like how he's like, yeah, because yep. it's small. Like, yep. Brizzy went to town, Definitely. but like, you always just... Yep, Someone's 100%. always around the corner, or you know what I mean. That's what I was sort of used to up, up there. And uh, when when you did get called up for to play in the prime ministers, what I mean, how did that all happen for you? And like that would have been a huge moment for you, going back to your home country, running on the field in the jersey. It was you know controversial that you decided to play for Australia instead of PNG. Yeah. I mean, walk us through the, that the whole the whole decision, the whole how it happened. In, yep. in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I played for Papua New Guinea before, but the um, decision was based on um, my father passed away last year. So when I went back to the funeral, and um, traditionally you have to, you know, <clears throat> do all the tradition, traditional yep. stuff, and you know, I learnt that um, the PNG Rugby League, because he like, because he um, after we got ba- he back he got bankrupt. He st- then went on to start off the school boys rugby league, and which. With majority of the players that play in the Hunters team, he's he's he bring them through the schoolboys. Oh, okay, yep. So, yep. so um, he's responsible for most of the, most of the blokes that play in that Hunters team. than now in the Queensland Cup. Yep. And spe- like especially the captain. Um, yep. Anyway, so I've learnt that you know they kicked him out of his house, like the way he stayed in, because um, the the PNG Rugby League gave it to him because you know he was he. he Started drug um, school boys rugby league out of his own pocket. Like no one, no one wanted, no one wanted to touch it. Like he started everything, went to car, like started carnival, started everything out of his own pocket. The man, the man was broke. And then yeah. once it like just generates, you know, interest, and in once you know the public's, I mean, like other people started seeing like the, what it can, yeah. what it can be, and like you know what, yeah, how much money it's involved in. Yeah. Like it's very corrupt over there. And, yeah. and then you know people started putting the hand in the pie stuff like that, and then, yeah. you know. But that wasn't that type of person. Didn't really care. But like, as long yep. as you know the country's going good and the, the rug, it's all about the kids and the rugby league. And then yep. ended up, you know, um, kicking him out of the house. The PNG rugby out of the house. He was still owed hundred grand, hundred kina. Sorry, like I can say from the PNG rugby league, and he was sleeping in his car. What? He was sleeping in his car for a while, and then you know, and you know, that just said it all for me. You know, that cat, like someone that you know put his own money into it. Yep. And, and then time, effort, yeah, time, love. effort, everything, and then you know. Brad Tassel, like he used to be the chairman, he, I am 
I would like I, I don't hate anyone in the world. Yep. But like that person comes close for what he done to my old man, you know. Just you know, it's a person personal yep. thing, and with the PNG Rugby League, like like for them to you know turn on their one one of their own or whatever, and I was like you know, I've I've played for my country, I've played in front of my old man. That's all all I wanted all to do when I was young. But yep. and I thought and like sat and thought about it. Like when I was growing up in Cairns, I wasn't trying to be someone. Um, from PNG, I was trying to be Darren Lockyer, you know. Yeah, I yeah. was looking up to you know John O and you know people in my idol. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to play play for Queensland. I wanted to play in the green and gold, and you know, I always I owe so, so much to Queensland and so much to you know Australia and rugby league because yeah. you know what I've you know obviously become now. Like yeah, yeah, to, what to, you've yeah, what I've achieved, but like you know, as a person, as everything really, yeah, I owe a lot, and you know, it's the only way that I. Knew how to give it back to you in the Australian public because you 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 were here when you were six years old. Yeah. So I mean that's pretty young. Like, um, yeah. Like if let's say let's say for example let's say you were white and you were from Scotland. Yeah. And you were here when you were six. No one would have. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No one. Yeah. No one would care. Yeah. But because because it's you you're an Indigenous PNG guy, and and your skin isn't white, and you are you know what I mean? Like people yeah, have this exactly. idea in their head that you're not less Australian, but you're more PNG than Australian, if yeah. you know what I mean. Whereas yeah. if you were Irish or Scottish or whatever, and you came over six, because you have an Aussie accent, you're, you're yeah, you're just as much Australian yeah. as, as any Australian. You know what I mean? So yeah, exactly, it's, exactly it's right. Really exactly weird right. like that. Yeah, really weird like that. There would be no issue if if, if it was you know obviously different coloured skin, but it's just well, you, yeah. It's crazy, you know what I mean? Like, do, do you see what I'm saying with that? I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like, you, well, if you go to the tip of Australia, you can, there's Torres Strait Islanders, and Torres Strait Islanders people look exactly like PNG people. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not, and like, yeah. I'm not, I'm no, you know, yeah. Like, what, what are the ancient bloody, whatever, <laughs> like, it, yeah. You know, but like, back in the day, it could be like, you know, they used to island hop all the time. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, isn't, I think that's how they originally settled. They came, like, as in thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, the, the um, Aboriginals came from uh, China, I think, maybe, or up that up that direction. They yeah. came over the islands and into Australia. I mean, that would have been, like, 50,000 years ago. Yeah. Oh, but but, yeah, but as I said, like, if, if, your, if your colour was, skin, colour of your skin was white, no one would have an issue. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, well, he's an Australian. But because cause you look and you look, Papua New Guinea, people seem to re- feel that you, that you, your allegiance is more to them. If like, it's yeah, just, yeah, it's really yeah, weird. exactly, exactly, it's exactly. Really I, weird. I know exactly what you mean. Like, for example, let's say, um, like, I don't know if Hazmal Masri grew up here, but like, if he, he, let's say he was born in Lebanon or whatever, mm. and he came here. Mm. No one would have any, no one would be like, you should be playing for Lebanon. Yeah, there's heaps of guys in the NRL. I think it was it was it Scott McManus? No, not Scott McManus. The guy, the, the James winger, McManus. James McManus. I think he's got some kind of background in him. Yeah, Scottish. They're, they're, yeah, so there's a few guys in the NRL that actually didn't weren't born in Australia, and no yeah. one has no one has an issue with yeah. it. You know, yeah, so it's, exactly. it's weird. So yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I don't think I think it should just be up to whoever whoever the player decides that that they not love more, but they just that's what they feel like their home is for now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you wouldn't say right. it's not like to, you would say to people. Like when you meet people, you you don't go. You would say you're Australian. You would say, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Like, like just for instance, when I was over in, you know, America. Yeah, you're saying so you're Australian. Australian. We're from Australia. Yeah, and which is no disrespect to the PNG heritage. Like, yeah. you, I'm sure you're extremely proud of that. But it's just it's yeah, really strange how we still have this this like stereotype in our head of what we think an Australian is, yeah. rather to what. Yeah. If you're born here, if sorry, if the, well, look, to be, oh, I'm not gonna get. To be honest, like yeah. the true Australians of it. Like you if, you're gonna get, oh, if, if you're going to get the true Australians, the Aboriginal. Yeah, people. exactly. Which would, would make you people would think that you were more that than a white Australian. Yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So it's really weird, like that. It's it's weird that there should there shouldn't have even been a controversy. I don't think you know you came yeah. here when you were six. You played all your footy in Australia. Yeah, it's, I think it was more from the PNG people. Yeah, that's true. Cook, yeah, like, that's true. Because Australia would love to have you. <laughs> We'd love to have you, bro. We want you here as much as we can. Um, because I yeah I, I reckon that you're you're a future Australian rep, a hundred percent. So. Um, I hope you do end up making the Australian side. Um, and uh, Queensland, you play for Queensland? Or uh, no, I'm just just an emerging squad. No, as in like you would play for Queensland. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that rule of that rule of uh, your first is it your first uh, like eight, eighteen and over? Yeah, you yeah, play for? you played because you yeah. you were at Rabbitohs, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you because you grew up in Queensland, you decided you want to be Queensland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a good choice as well because I'm a Queenslander, bro. <laughs> um, so what was that like? The emotion on the field when you put the jersey on in your hometown. There's obviously a lot of um, you know 
they had a lot of they had a problem with it obviously yeah what, what was that like for you i mean was it um, hard was it yeah it was pretty different eh? so just like i tried to just uh laugh it off like just i just try to just joke around all the time just to, yep. just to you know but it's got to be like a pretty intense pretty, yeah it was really intense and like um it's actually i was warming up and then i was like getting goosebumps whatever and then like hairs back my neck stand up and yep. warming up and i was sort of kicking and I looked over the crowd and they just go oh. <laughs> and i just smiled and started laughing yeah, yeah. And i was just like yeah and uh, but is but is it is that like a really strange feeling because obviously you love your heritage you love yeah your, you yeah love oh, your yeah very strange you're very you like you would be very connected to your own land and then you know you, you obviously went back for your father's funeral and you did all the traditional stuff mm. you know what i mean like so it would be such a a conflicting bit of emotion yeah you're putting on the jersey of the australian jersey you love australia you grew up here you are an australian but your heritage is you know what i mean That'd yeah so exactly weird, exactly weird, yeah man. it was um it was a bit different, but like the whole week sort of um, like led me up to that game was like pretty because from when I w- walked out, like to my um, like when I walked out, it was just crazy, um, yep. and like had big banners and whatnot, and it was yep. pretty hectic and um, experiencing that, and then sort of like when I got to the game, it wasn't as bad. Oh, okay. You know, so but like you know, you were climatized yeah, sort of bit. Yeah, because because. Uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, um, I was getting pumped from, like, the media over there and whatnot, but, like, I, I understand, like, but I don't expect them to understand my uh, my decision because, you know, they're, they're just everyday, like, they're just the audience, so they're, to speak. Like, they haven't lived your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't like, I don't expect them to understand, like, why I made the decision. Like, I'll, I'll, t- I'll, I'll tell them, but for them to really grasp it, they sort of have to just really sit down and think. But, yeah. like, you know... When when someone's like angry or like someone, they're not gonna like listen. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. They've yeah, only got their yeah. mindset already. Yeah, they're not gonna listen to the outside yeah. or whatever. But like, and it, I mean, the media would have played a big part of manipulating the oh, yeah. opinion of you. I mean, the media could have taken a completely different route and been like, he's been in Australia since he's six years old. Yeah, exactly. He, you know, he clearly loves the country. Yeah, he, yeah. That's just he's just decided. And I mean, people don't want to say it, but playing for Australia for your career is so much more better than playing for any other country. Yeah, like, it's, it's yeah. just the way it is. Like, obviously, you don't have to say anything mm. on that. I know, like, it'd be a heated topic, but as a, as a, I'm I'm retired now, so as a fan of the game, everyone knows that if you play for Australia, it is so much better for your career and financially than it is playing for any other country. New Zealand's starting to catch up a bit, like New Zealand, because or well, not a bit, a lot. But I mean, like, like I mean, let's let's be honest. Like, let's say you play for, let's say you say I'm going to play for PNG now, mm. and let's say, for example, in a hypothetical situation, you miss playing for Australia ten times. Yeah, that's one hundred and twenty grand or something like yeah. that. However much they get paid per per yeah. game, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you got to, even, at the end of the day, you just got to look at it like Dan puts food on my table. So. Yeah, and but even no, not, yeah, yeah, even not even yeah. looking at it like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, it, it sucks. It sucks, man, because you should be embraced and they should be proud of what you've achieved and what yeah, you've exactly. done instead of you know worrying about who plays who. Um, this year going forward, say so we'll get. Through the negative bit, was, yeah. Even though, such, <laughs> even though it was such a positive bit for you, yeah. Uh, this yeah. year going forward, what, what do you like? What's what would be your goal if you sat down and said, by the end of the year, I want to do this? What would it be? You reckon? Would it be a, would it be Origin? Would, would it be, be win a grand final, man? Win a grand final, yeah. Um, man, ah. watching the Cowboys. Man. Oh man, just just to know, like I was, you were there, and like you just just because you know the boys so well, and that, yep. and like you know how hard Jono works, and like how hard like the team would work to yep. reach that goal and like just for the I know the like, Townsville people and just like the just a Townsville environment just yep. you know just everything you just sort of like man that'd be like something crazy just, oh, man. that was just the only final out of every other final that I've ever watched or ever like you know seen that um it's like seen live that I've that oh, I've were actually you there at the game? hey were you at the no game? no no but I'm saying like if oh, yeah, yeah. Game, other games I've seen live or yep. not yep. but that's the only game that I actually like I was like, man, like I just stopped and just like had a long hard thing. I said, like, no, how man, important that was. How like important it yep. is to you know win a grand final, like oh mate, and, and also uh, like I was I was gutted because obviously I'm um, Broncos boy, yeah, because I like, played for him and yeah. I had a lot of mates on that side. The more I sat back and thought about it, I, I feel like that win was so important for Townsville. For North Queensland and also for the strong indigenous indigenous community in oh, in Townsville, mean hundred, you know what I mean? Like because like yeah, the ironic thing is earlier in this conversation you said 
all I thought about was footy. That's what kind of kept me away from whatever. Yeah. There are so many young Indigenous boys. Exactly. Or so many young boys from in same similar situation from you come over exactly. from Paraguay that all they have is footy. Yeah. And so that grand final win, I think, is just like... For those for that for that community is so important and it yeah. means so much. Yeah. And also, the man to do it had to be Thursday. Like, yeah, it had to be JT. Oh, that was so good. Like, how good is he? He is a freak. Like, even just like it, that's that's the thing with rugby league. Like, um, there's a lot of stories. That, like, you know, yeah, that's yeah. like we come from a lot of rugby league that are just you know, that blue collar people, sort of, so yeah. to speak. And we're just you know, everyday people that you know. That's why we always get in trouble. And we're, yeah. like, apparently we're you know. You know, people that shouldn't be earning this much money or this, this and that. You know, because we're just, you know, if you take yeah. away footy from us, we pretty much, you know, we're a tradie or you know, we're a labourer, so to speak. Well, now, now tradies and labourers are earning really good money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, yeah, no, but I, know, I know, I know. You exactly know what I mean? What that's saying. that's yep. like, yep. And that's what, that's why it makes probably like a, a real good brotherhood. And, yep. And you know, the dressing sheds and whatnot, and yeah, hundred percent. Everyone bro. relate to each other. And yep, definitely. I think, and also, I think a lot of. Uh, you get this bad footy stereotype which I think it's really unfair because a lot of the kids that do come up they've come up from rough childhoods they've come up from no education they've come up from like not not a a privileged background at all and yet so like they don't have this and and honestly there's not many things that happen in the NRL that I don't know plenty of other 20 year old boys oh yeah (laughs) they're 100% do way worse stuff Um, so looking back on your career you know what would be a memory where you, you you stood back and you said, "Wow, like oh, this is this is me content. This is me happy. This is something that I've achieved." Uh, you know, what what would that what would that moment be for you? Playing for Australia, really? Yeah, put on but that like, jersey. yeah, yeah, put on that jersey. But um, obviously, we better put on, but just put on the green and gold. Yep. Um, obviously, it wasn't like a real game; like it was just the prime ministers. But yeah, Mate, it's, it's still like the prime yeah. ministers. That still... and, um, uh. That semi final was I got three semi final. See how we kicked it. Yep. And um, winning um, hooker of the year. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I was. I forgot to ask you that. Dalian hooker of the year, 2014. I mean, was that a, when you walked up and got? I was, that? I was shocked. I, I was like, what? I was just happy to like be there. Sort of. Like, I was happy to be there. I was just you know, <laughs> down in the beers, like free beers. So you had you didn't think you didn't know. No at way. All. No chance. No chance. What? I mean, because look, look at the guys you beat. I mean, you, you've beaten guys like Robbie Farah, yeah. beaten guys like Cameron Smith. Yeah. I mean, does that blow your mind? Yeah, I, I know. Like, and at twenty three years old, that's I crazy. Bro. Yeah, I know. I didn't even think. <laughs> oh, that's what I mean. Like, I was just so shocked. So, what's, the, what's going on? Because <laughs> like, I went to say hello to um, my manager, and then like the camera was there, and they're like, "Oh, don't go anywhere." So like, I'm going to tell the manager, "I'll like, hurry up and come back." And I was like, "Oh, what?" And I was just sort of half You're tipsy like, at the moment, and then yeah, I came yeah. back, and then I was, and then like yeah, I was just like chilling out, and then yep. yeah, I just they called your name, yeah, they called my name. I was like, what? And uh, like, what did you, when you walked off the stage? What, 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 like, who did you call first? Who did you? What, oh, no what, one, what? no one, because like cause my phone was just in my pocket, and like yep. I just I was just shocked at the moment. And yeah, I was yeah. Just, boom, put the ward down and just kept drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and had a good time. It yeah, made the night time. even better. Yeah. So so twenty three. So so twelve. 12 years old, had nearly nothing, didn't know what you were going to do. 10 years later, essentially, you went in Dali and Rooker. Like, that's crazy, bro. Yeah. When you think about it. When you think about it. Yeah, like, like, that's insane, bro. Yeah. Then, um, oh, it's stiff. Like, I've, have you heard of the book, A Law of Attractions? Law, I've heard of the idea of... Yeah, the know, idea. Positive, like, yeah, 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 positive thinking. Well, when I, was, when, I was, was, when I was reading it, like, I started to realise um, what the book was about. Like, yep. I started to realise what I was doing when I was younger. Yeah. So, I like, sort of changed my perspective on yep. things now. So I always just. Oh, like, what, did it? you read that recently or when you were a kid? No, recently. Yeah, recently, okay. like, so, like, yeah. like, like yeah. last year. Because like a, a kid, a, there are thousands of kids in that were in your situation that made one bad decision. Yeah. And went the wrong way, and you seem to have just somehow snuck through all the yeah. bullshit. Snuck through all the. What do you reckon the difference was? What do you reckon the, you know, because you would have had mates that you grew up with that had, you know, hard childhoods and yeah. rough upbringings. What do you reckon the difference was? I just think my um, my mom and dad, like, yep. Dean and Sue, um, but I know, honestly, like, they just, oh, just don't want to let, you know, don't want to let people down. Oh, 100%. It's definitely. It's definitely. The, 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 the old cliche, um, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> that <laughs> like that hurts way, me, yeah. like, you know, that, well, as soon as I let people, yep. like, you know, that I really respect and, like, look up to, like that, that's that's worse than you know anything I could imagine. So I just didn't didn't want to do that. I yep. think and yeah, I was just making them proud. Like every time I 
play or every time they, we won, like, yep. same playing footy and then, you know, started making footy, footy rep sides and yep. stuff like that. Like, they were just proud and then, yep. it's, you know, like... And you, you kept know, wanting to do yeah, it. Yeah, kept yeah. wanting to do it and just, yep. you know, always, you know, always sort of just chasing, chasing that, you know, feeling. Yep. And, uh, like, three questions. Yep. Craziest memory? Craziest where you're like, whoa, this is, this is mental. Like, what's going on? Um... Like in footy? Footy, yeah, footy. Footy crazy. Oh, you can go crazy in life too if you want, right? Oh, no. Um, Actually, crazy. You would have seen some crazy stuff going up in PNG. What was craziest memory of PNG before you were sick? Oh, before you man, came I was, can't remember. Even Cairns think. there. There would have been some crazy memories in Cairns. Um, man. What are you? Oh, probably like the craziest memory ever was just like... Um, <laughs> it's weird, but... <laughs> Some of it's footy, but like... When I um when I tackled Sam McHenry when I was playing for Cowboys, yeah, I done this hit and I was spinning. I was all I can just remember was just like just crazy because I was just going oh, okay. around around. I was actually going to bring that video up. Oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up now because I wasn't um, sure whether like we would have time because I knew you had a pretty interesting story upbringing and stuff like that. So I'll um I'll bring that up and you walk us through exactly. Oh, sorry, what yeah, I've got another one. So, uh, yeah, no, that's no, sweet. We got it's all good. From getting robbed, getting robbed, getting like honest, like me and my brother were watching TV in PNG. And then we, yeah, and then because we lived like where they, like pallets and pallets and pallets of alcohol or whatever, yep. and like people used to come in, like put them on trucks, go to the bottle loads or whatever. Yep. It's a big warehouse, and we lived like had a house in there. So you lived near a bottle shop? No, we lived like where the warehouse is. So like, okay. doesn't, like we built a house there. Like, yep. So we stay in the house, we're watching like HBO, walked out, everything was quiet, and it's, it's like 12 o'clock in the day, everyone's working, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, yeah. Got held up. Everyone got held up in gunpoint. What in in your home? In my home, like in the um in the warehouse we're at, and like we didn't realize we were just inside. So you were sitting watching TV, and then just in the warehouse, just there. Yeah, like you sort up. of like a ha- the house was there, and the warehouse is sort of there, but like yeah. you know we were sort of upstairs. So yeah. downstairs because we had like high, everyone yeah, was yeah. getting robbed, and we walked downstairs. And it's all quiet. We're like, what's going on? And then. Robbers just left before we got there. So the, ro- the gunpoint now. What? So the robbers, you're sitting up there watching. So we just missed the robbers. Like in that, like it was Imagine crazy. if you walked down and they freaked out. And yeah, I know. Down. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Like <sighs> that's that. That's that. It was broad daylight too. And oh my god, that's crazy, man. You're lucky. That's someone shining down into there, man. That's crazy. Yeah. Just imagine you walk down and they just started popping off. Yeah. And then you like pa, turn, pa, pa. then you turn gangster and you just go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> full on, I was like, full on, cause I walked down, I was going, what's going on? I was full on. So we're watching like a karate movie, and I'm, I'm full on going like that. <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, we're just going karate. Just, <laughs> karate. Oh, um, all right. I'll. Uh, is it so? Sam Sam McKendry. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. The, the name of the video is Seguiaro Attempts to Kill Himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. Some of the stuff you... guys come up with. Oh, oh it's pretty funny, man. All right. I'll get up on the screen. And you yeah, tell me yeah. what you were thinking. Was this one of the big hits of the year? Yeah. Um, yeah I just seen Kevy like, get out. And, um, and I seen Sammy come from the car park. Yep. And because I had my shoulder just... I shoulder operated my right left left one yep. so I had to turn and use my right one because I was a confident right? yep. so I just sprinted and just like went for the best <laughs> hope for the best and I just jumped up if I knew yep. if I would have just half get him because yep. that's when the shoulder charges were out we're so. okay yeah, yeah. yeah far out man that was crazy and, and after did it sting after it or were you oh right? no it was sweet because of adrenaline yep. as soon as the game stopped I had a bit of a concussion <laughs> and oh, I was really? vomiting the whole time oh really vomiting the, vomiting the whole time in the showers I was yep. just like Cast oh. that, and lucky mum and dad were there, and then just took me home. Bro, I the, I, got, I got I got I got um I probably shouldn't say this, but I don't care. I got concussed once against the Cowboys two thousand yeah. two thousand and eight. Anyway, like I, I stayed on the field, and I, I I got it like from people. I scored a try, and someone slid their knee like knees oh, into yeah. the head. Anyway, I I I stayed. You know when you get concussed, but you don't know you can concussed, so you yeah. stay on the field. Anyway, I I I got off the field. I don't remember any of this though. Exactly, I don't remember any of this. So like, this is what I got told. I sat on the field, kept playing for like probably 10 minutes and the game ended. I went off the field. I 
I'd just um, broken up with my ex girl, this my ex ex. Yeah. And I was with my ex now. Yeah. Anyway, I was so concussed. I rang my ex ex and t- was talking to her like we were together. And I was like, you know, hey, how are you? Um, you know, like, what's going on? And she, she's like bawling her eyes out because it's still pretty fresh. And like, right you're now. kidding? Yes. And I'm like, what are you crying for? What's going on? And she's like, are you fucking serious? We've broken up like two months ago or whatever. You know, you blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You're crazy. And she's like, she's like bawling her eyes out. She's like, I can't believe you do this. And then like, I just like, I was like, well, what the hell? And then I like hung up and then I woke up probably like, 20 minutes like as in I was still awake but yeah, I yeah, changed you the start. consciousness and then I was like oh shit no I've called my ex ex-girl like I called my ex-girlfriend at the time oh, and I was with no. my and I, was, I was with my like new girlfriend that like you know obviously she wouldn't be happy that I'd be calling my ex-girlfriend yeah 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 but yeah so I was that concussed I called my uh, my ex ex-girlfriend she was bawling it was pretty uh, dramatic you scenes just, like, you just remember a glimpse like oh bro it was it's so like, weird yeah, it was yeah. so weird I remember like I, was, I wasn't crying but I was nearly crying to Wayne Bennett about like I dropped one ball that that game and yeah. hadn't dropped the ball all season. I dropped in a tackle. I'm just like, sorry, Wayne. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And he's like, mate, it's fine because like they didn't know I was concussed. Yeah. Because like they just didn't know because I yeah. didn't get knocked out or anything. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I can't believe I dropped that ball. Like I can't believe it. And he's like, mate, it's fine. We won. You scored two tries. Like it's yeah. all good. You played really well. And I'm like, no, no. Like I, I you know, I've let you down. I'm just, I'll never do it again. <laughs> just fully wigging out, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro I was fucking crazy, man. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. What was I going to ask you? Oh, yeah. So, craziest memory um, on the field. Oh, yeah. That you, that was the the hit. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then obviously the the gun held up, being held up. Um, best rapper ever. Best rapper ever. ever. Tupac. What? Hundred, like, bro. That's like seven Tupacs or something. Eight Tupacs. Yeah. yeah. He's, the, he's the best rapper. rapper bro, Eminem. Eminem, Eminem slays him. Oh well. Like he, it's, that's alive. Yeah, M. Bro, Eminem slays him every day of the week. I don't week. know, man. Lyrically, lyrically, everything, bro. Yeah, but lyric, like, but Tupac was like more than lyrically, man. He's just about the he, way yeah, his he life, did. and he's just, you know, he's all. He's just, he was just so above. Yeah, like, I know. Yeah, further than everyone else, he had a message that was more than rap. He yeah, was speaking exactly. about issues that you know black people dealt with in America. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Best rapper now. Oh, M. M-M. Best rap now, yeah. M. But yeah, like, yeah. you can you can't really call Drizzy. Can you call Drizzy a rapper? Uh, he's, I just don't like. I said this to a few other boys. Like, yeah. I hate how feminine he is. Like, they don't. There's nothing wrong with being feminine. I just, yeah, yeah. I always picture a rapper in my head as tough and yeah, you know, I know hood and all that kind of stuff. But don't get me wrong, I love his music. Yeah. I think Kendrick is probably like right. Yeah, right, right, I don't, no, sorry, Jake Cole. Cole. Jay Cole, Cole, hands down, man. Oh, they're releasing, Cole a, they're is, releasing a mixtape oh, together. Yeah, I know. I'm not really like a big Kendrick fan, to tell you the truth. Really? That is blasphemy. Yeah, bro. I don't really listen to him, mate. Really? Just, just Cole, man. He's just got mad flow. He's just bro, a man. And, you Kendrick know, he, is he's hectic. He's a knockabout bloke. Like, yeah. he's just, he knows, he's not trying to, you know, trying to pretend to be someone. He knows yep. who he is. I think he's he's very um very similar to Tupac. He speak, speaks about yeah. speaks about things. I think Kendrick's more Tupac, but J. Cole's very similar to Tupac. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if I like Kendrick's flow. Eh? Really? Yeah. Fuck, oh, really? That's crazy. Oh, yeah. my God. Um, and favorite movie of all time? Oh, wow. Yep. Can I have two? All right, I'll give you two. Yeah. You're going to laugh, but Troy. <laughs> Bro, that's... Don't you dare sound yeah. your That's a fantastic Troy movie. and Remember Titans. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I decided, like, good. I love Remember Titans. But right. my go-to is probably Wedding Crashes, but I like, Remember Titans. Okay, yeah, I'll, Titans. I'll pay that. That's a, Remember uh, Titans so do. Bro, that's so Denzel good. Washington cannot do anything wrong. Bro, he is a god among men. Oh, <laughs> He's so good. He's so He's, he's more he's number one. Him and Brad Pitt are more oh, number yeah, ones. Yeah, like, yeah. He's, like, anything he's in. Have you seen John Q? Yeah, oh! <laughs> Oh, bro, sick help, sick help, <laughs> oh man! How can he just do that, man? He's just bro, so... John Q. I was bawling my oh. eyes out when he was going like that in there. Yeah, oh, I didn't cry, but I had that, you know, that oh. feeling. Like almost bro, cry. I was like, God, oh, shit! Oh man, Denzel. I can watch anything, Denzel, man. I think how good's Equalizer? He's just so ga- he can be that gangster too. You know, you know what I say to people is any you can if you put any other person in Denzel's role in those movies, they wouldn't be that good. But no if, way. But if Denzel's in it, it's just a good movie. Yeah, like it no is, matter what, 100%. Even, if, even if the movie's not good, it's a good movie. American Gangster. Yeah. He got He's 10%. so good. He goes, There's your ten percent. <laughs> oh, far out. So good. Um, all right, I get to these fan questions. We're going way over time, bro. I apologize. Yeah, you're right. You had a very, very interesting story. Very interesting story. Um, 
What happened to your vlogs? Oh, I really enjoyed your documentary. I oh, docu- oh, no, we just... You've got to do more of that, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah, like, I know, like, I know. I mean, look I know. how like, successful this has been. Yeah, Imagine 100%. You guys. Like, I was... Just Isaac. Isaac, I suppose... Isaac sort of drove... Was, like, the driving force behind it, so... Yeah, he's sort of just off, like... You know, when it's come to the end of the season, so we yep. sort of just sort of stopped doing it. But, yeah, I wouldn't even mind just hiring, like, a film crew or just, like, something, but, like, it's good insight on just... People can you know, see what it's like. Yeah, then. like, but not, but like, I was saying like, before, well, long time ago, not a couple of months ago, about two months ago, when we were just sitting down talking to um, one of our mates, Connie. Yep. I uh, mean, I was like, you know, so many ideas that I've I wanted to do with that, like Doco. Doco, just like um, and I, I was talking when I was actually in the prime ministers um to the referee. Yep. About doing a doco with the referees because, like, I, I reckon referees will be good. Would be interesting. so interesting. Yeah, like, yeah. I found it interesting because, you know, they're just always under pressure all the time, and then, you know, it's one decision they get scrutinised in the media or whatever. But like, it's from from like from like outside looking in, so so hard yeah, yeah. for them and like to be in the audience. It's easy you know, point the finger, but like, you know, it doesn't stop there for them. Like. When they go home, like like you know yourself, when you go home, if you make a mistake or something, you don't even know if you're going to make the team next oh, week. 100%. So the whole week, I would love to do something with referees that um, follow them home, and then you know, you know their relationships between their partners or whatever, because they made the decision wrong in the game, they've got to watch the game again, and they're going to come up with a report the next morning, and yep. you know they're just worried if they're going to have a job, you know, the yeah, next yep. next day or so to speak, and then, you know, say, for instance, they just had a new kid, like, first, like, firstborn child or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, and the, the missus is just yeah. like, you've got to be home all, or, yeah. for this, like, you have a kid, and, yeah. you know, it's so hard to juggle all that stuff, and, but, like, people, there, there are probably people out there, you know, single parents, you know, give yeah. it up to, but, like, people don't understand when you point the finger, like, you just got to be, you know, they just, I just want them to understand. Put put yourself in their shoes. Yeah, I just want them to understand more instead of, you know, yep. going, just making a harsh decision straight away. And yep. you know, maybe they can just take back from that documentary or, you know. Yeah, yeah I know. Even if you reach a couple of people and you're just like, yep. you know, maybe I was a bit too harsh or maybe the next time, you know, I see that, idea, you know. Man. That's a I'll really, do, really good idea. Something like that. Really I'd, I'd be, I reckon a lot of people would be interested. Because I personally, I reckon I'm yeah. just in referees or just, you know, just people like in, in, in sports people when they yep. go home, you know, you know, I don't sleep till. I don't. I barely sleep after games. You know? oh, it's man, that neither, hard. And then neither. you know, you, know, you find you find me just watching the game yep. like again yep. uh, about two o'clock in the morning. Yep. Sometimes because you know if you lost or something like just like the year we had as well, you know, and then yep. you like you, you, you're sitting like honestly you're sitting the same thing like thinking to yourself like what did I do wrong? Like, yeah, I know. You know you when mean, you when I'm you go through the patches and periods oh, of time, bro. you know what I mean. Like I, I reckon that'd be very interesting to what people people only see eighty minutes. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So, I, I think I think you should 100 percent chase it up. Like I don't know how, like what your commitments are, but that would be really, really interesting. And also, it would be a good eye opener for the fans to see what, exactly what like, the refs really do go through. Yeah, like one bad yeah, call, definitely. and they're the most hated men in Australia. They're all on the back page and stuff. Yep. And you know, yeah, 100 um, bro. That's very. Yeah, I'd love to. That's very, do very that, true. So. Um, how uh, how hard was your decision to to choose Queensland and Australia? Obviously, we've already kind of asked that. Yeah. Um. Um. I kind of asked that. Do you miss playing with the Cowboys? What do you find? No, we've well, kind of already answered that. But yeah, do you miss playing with the Cowboys? Do you miss miss a few of the boys? Or um, I, was, I miss 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 the boys. Yep. Um. But yeah, I just, like I just miss the boys. I don't miss playing with the Cowboys. Yep. Like. I do and don't, but like I just miss miss the boys. Like yep. I mates, and I, grew, I pretty much grew yep. up playing against them and playing with them um, since I was a junior. So, yeah. Uh, what is Gus like as a mentor? What does he do that other footy figures don't do? Uh, mate, he just makes you feel like it's only you in the room, yep. so to speak. And he talks, says hello to everyone. He's just, you know, he's didn't, he knows how to make someone feel special, like or whatever, yep. you know. Yep. Because he's got like. A, such a like presence in in the room and such a presence in the game. When it comes to talk to you, like you just it's such a big deal to you. Yep, I know. I know exactly yourself. What you, mean. you know what I mean? Yep. Definitely. So it's, it's just such like it's like an honour when you first talk to him yep. and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, what was it like playing against uh, Corey Norman? Funny, yeah. <laughs> really? He's funny. 
Yeah, we just um, it was it was pretty much like another game, but like whenever you know we um, sort of came together, it was just hilarious. It's good, good as well. But uh, like he's, I think he's two up on me. Oh really? Yeah, so it's a little bit of a battle. Yeah, because we left Normally. together. Mr. Slide on in. Mr. Slide on in. <laughs> Bro, we've gone way over time. We're going to get you out of here. Yeah, it's been sweet. way too long, man. I apologise for that. I told you 40, 30 minutes and it's been like an hour. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> no, no. Sorry to you, bro. Sorry to you. Nah, it's, um, we're just rambling on. This, is, this has been awesome, man. Such an eye-opener. I, I really, I thoroughly enjoy hearing about the struggles that, that, you know, like, you know, the Indigenous struggle here in Australia and your mm. own struggle in PNG coming here, man. It's, it's like, I respect so much what you've achieved because... To do it, like, I can't even imagine how hard it would have been for you. So, yeah. congratulations on everything you've done. I hope you go even better next year, and thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Cheers, Brozzy. Sweet.